vShopper comes with an extensive number of inspections and fixes for C++. So let's take a look at some of them. So for example, here I have a C out output statement and let's suppose I want to add an end line at the end of it all. Now vShopper does a pop-up and it tells me that I have to put an std prefix for this to work. So I can click it or I could have pressed alt enter and I do exactly that. Here I have a constructor parameter that's not being used for anything. So what I can do is I can move the mouse over it. Notice it's grayed out because it's not being used right now. But I can press alt enter and I can, for example, initialize a corresponding field from this parameter like so. Here what I have is a function which returns an int but doesn't have a return statement. So reshopper kind of tells me that there is no return statement here. What I can do once again is I can press alt enter here and I can add a return statement and put a value here. Next up we have an example of dangerous operator precedence. This statement may look okay but in actual fact the precedence of the question mark operator is not what you'd expect and we can actually verify that this is the case by doing alt enter and turning it from a ternary operator into an ordinary if and now hopefully you can see what the problem is exactly. Next up we have a situation where we have a spurious semicolon in the if statement and this would result in a possibly erroneous empty statement. So here all we would have to do to fix this is simply get rid of the semicolon. Now here is an example of how you can manipulate code. So here we have an if else statement and we can do a couple of things with it. If you press alt enter you can see that there is an option to replace it with a ternary expression like so. And another option is to press alt enter and you can invert the if statement swapping the order of the conditions like so. Here we have a couple of issues in the following function. First of all, we have redundant round braces around account open and account balance equals zero. So what we can do is we can get rid of them. And there are actually two options if you press alt enter. One is to remove just this instance of redundant parentheses. The other is to remove all the parentheses in the current scope. So we'll do that and notice they're both gone. And finally, let's take a look at an example of what happens when you have a switch on a color which happens to be an enumeration. What you can do is you can press Alt Enter and you can generate the missing case statements. And by the way, if I get rid of one of them, for example, I can go back and I can regenerate the missing statement once again. So these are some of the examples when it comes to ordinary C++. Now let's talk about macros. Now vSharper fully analyzes what happens with the macros and it can offer you subtle hints as well as possibilities of actually manipulating them. So for example what's happening here is I have an invocation of the mad macro and mad is itself a multiply and add operation. So it's a macro that uses a macro. What I can do is I can actually inline the whole macro right in this location. I can press Alt Enter and you'll see that there are two options here. One is to substitute just a single level macro call. So if I do that I get a multiply plus z because that's how mad is defined. However, I can also perform the substitution recursively expanding every single macro that's involved in this macro. So after I do that I get simply x times y plus z because if you expand the mad and then you expand the multiply that's what you would be getting. Vshopper is also very smart when it comes to templates. So here we have a classic kind of case for template metaprogramming. And one of the things I can do is I can for example do a static assert on the value of a factorial that would be calculated via template metaprogramming. And notice if I change something here, so if I put 60 here, then Vshopper is complaining. It's saying that this static assert is going to fail. So essentially Vshopper is capable of expanding the templates recursively and figuring out whether a static assert in this case would work or not. Also notice that if I move the mouse over the actual value, I get a hint as to the final value. So here it's telling me that the factorial of 4 is equal to 24. So this is something that would be typically shown only at compilation time. But here reshopper is doing it ahead of time and it's giving you the final value. Finally, let's take a look at a feature which is called create from usage. Now create from usage is fairly simple. So let's for example make a struct called person. Now what I can do is I can populate this struct not by writing code inside the struct itself but rather by using it. So let's make an instance of person and here I can set the person's age for example. So I set the person's age and of course the age field doesn't exist but I can press alt enter and I can create this field. So I'll make a field called age and similarly if I want let's say a name I can do p.name equals John for example and perform the same operation once again. 
create a field called name. This time I'll use a string and notice the blue pop up once again with Shopper saying that, well, this is an STD string and you have to have an include statement as well. So when I press Alt Enter, that's exactly what I get. And similarly, you can work with functions. So for example, if I want a function called say hello, I can simply write it like so and once again press Alt Enter and create the appropriate member function. And of course this member function isn't entirely complete because it has to have a body somewhere. But I can press Alt Enter once again and I can either generate the implementation of the function or I can do it in line right inside the structure definition. And these are some of the ways that ReShopper analyzes your code and offers you ways of actually fixing it or improving it somehow.